Picture the pump like a camshaft on the inside, okay? And you've got, on this one, you've got like three little pistons that look like valves, okay? And that little camshaft, as it rides on there, that's what's gonna go ahead and start pumping our fuel, right? High pressure, not volume, okay? And what happens, that little camshaft, if it's not oiled properly, just like on an engine, what's the term for it when we don't have enough lubrication? What happens to that cam? Starts to spall, right? Okay, what's that? Friction. Friction, right. It starts to spall, it's not lubricated, and now you're getting metal. You're getting metal everywhere, okay? Not only are you getting metal everywhere, or lack thereof, or wearing it out on a high pressure pump, where is that metal going? In the rail. Injectors, where? In the rail. In the rail, sure, injectors, rail, where else? Engine. Where? In the engine. Okay, we got engine, where else is it going? To the return of the tank. Ah, oh, to the return of the tank. There it is. These prices, and I left it this way, on purpose. This is back in 2016 prices. This is just the parts. This is just the parts. You haven't even paid me labor to do it. Okay? Are we getting, this is usually why when these things come in, all right, and we find out that the fuel is contaminated, a lot of the, the first phone call is to the customer, and then you call your insurance company because you're about to warm up your ATM card. Yes, anytime that we try to help somebody, right, and we let them know of what could possibly be, right, and we can even let them know, hey, your check engine light's gonna come on, but I've done this for you, what happens? Ever since you fixed my car, it's broken. That story ain't happening here. I'm gonna fix it right, we're gonna do it right together, or it's not happening at all. So. I have my injector, and this one is labeled this, okay? And I take my new injector, and I put it in the vehicle. And I'm not gonna write it in. I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm just gonna fire it in. And now the truck won't start. Well, Dio, what'd you do? You've done this a million times before We didn't write the injector in, right? And it was fine. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna waste a bunch of time on a bunch of nonsense, okay? I have had it where this thing was running so bad, so bad, that the injector wasn't written in on something and it didn't want to fire up. It was so far out because it starts here, but then what does it do? It adapts, okay, depending on how poorly this thing is running. Give it more fuel, give it more, whatever it is, right? Whether it's the injector itself or how this thing is running. I've had, again, it's on a handful, a handful where guys have done that and they haven't written it in and I've been able to catch it. I, the first time I saw it happen, I, I almost fell over because I, I've seen where guys pop them in, they run them, oh, I forgot to ride them, put it in, whatever, and it's down the road. I have seen it on several cases where that injector's not written in and it was running so bad that they would not start. So it is very important to write that in. Uh, what do we need to make this thing fire? What? What? Pressure Say it louder. Pressure differential. There it is, pressure differential, okay? And again, depending on how clean our fuel is or how wore out our injector is, this is what you're looking at, right? I mean, my goodness, that's, you're talking about, and, and we'll see how crazy this actually gets here. If you're gonna look at a live adaptation of an injector, it's three, this is what you're looking at, okay? So again, depending on where I need to be in that cylinder, right? How important is it to write your injectors in now? Huh? Okay. Here's our pre-injection. We're gonna reduce our knock. We're gonna make power. And then we have to worry about uh, our oxidation catalyst and our DPF. If you're ever changing air filters on these, they need to be reset. There's an adaptation for that. Uh, the same thing with the mass airflow sensors. There's a reset for it. Okay, has to be done. If you don't, if you find that you've got a mass airflow sensor, okay, and this, you've got this thing dead to rights, if you change it and you do not reset the HFM offset drift, it's coming back with a light on your road test. I guarantee you. Okay, what's that? It's the same way, right. So uh, if that stuff is replaced, it's always good to go ahead and, and, and perform that adaptation. Uh, the other thing I wanna talk about too is if this pressure sensor is off, if this pressure sensor is off drift, incorrect, meaning implausible from the rest, I'm letting you know right now it will not start. So if you have a crank no start, the first place I like to start before I look at my fuel, because if I gotta look at my fuel, I gotta do what? I gotta do work, right? Do you like doing work? 
No, I don't. I got a hot date later. I got stuff to do, okay? But how much is it going to take for me to hook up my scan tool and look at some data? Are we okay with that? Yeah. Guys, we okay with that? Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Okay, so if I look at my intake air pressure and I look at my, my exhaust back pressure and I look at, what else we got there? Boost pressure. Boost pressure. Okay, there's three. And I can take into consideration where I'm at. Right? My actual, if you don't know what your air pressure is, find your airport online and see what you got. These pressure sensors need to be within, what's that? Should all be the same. Should all be the same. I'm going to tell you 10 to 15 HPA is what they are allowed. All right? There is a little bit of an asterisk, and it comes to this SOB right here, which is your exhaust back pressure sensor. Okay? The sear this guy is, He's in a rough environment, okay? Um, I've even had it where I've taken that sensor off and shot a little cleaner in it and then plugged it back in and I've gotten a better number, okay? That guy gets carboned up really, really fast, okay? And then it also will affect the number that you're gonna read. Uh, the other thing that will make the sensor not start other than this guy or him is also your exhaust back pressure sensor, okay? Again, you want to look at these guys, and they need to be 10 to 15. This guy, he can go higher. Mercedes-Benz says, depending on the temperature, it could be around 200 HPA off than the rest. Actually, 275 HPA, uh, HPA off than the rest, okay? And Mercedes-Benz says that it is acceptable. That's okay. If this guy is about 300 or 500 HPA off, what happens as it gets hot? Want to take a guess? It gets worse, exactly. So if you see your exhaust back pressure sensor, because it's the only one that will get worse with heat, okay? These guys, not so much. They're usually all right. This guy, because of where he's at, okay? Exhaust back pressure, right? So this guy can be off drift more than the rest, and it's okay until it's not. So if you see it way higher than the rest, pay attention to that. Okay, I'm not saying it's time to change it yet, but again, I'm just trying to get some more information on where am I going with this vehicle. How about this over here? Are you seeing that sensor out a little more? Am I concerned about it yet? No. Nah, not really. Not really. Okay, I got 961, 965, 934. Am I, am I that upset about it just yet? It's in the red. Am I upset about this? No. No, no don't care. Okay. How about now? How about now? Ah, uh, hold on, right? Now, on, now we're getting there. Now you're getting there, okay? And look, and this is where, when, we're, when we can be 275 HPA different, that's in the plus. The allowable is in the plus. So if I'm at 1,000, I could be at like 1,275, okay, on that sensor. Not 781. Now I've got a problem. You guys still pumped up? Yeah. How about over here? Do we like this over here? Oh, yeah. What do we got? Whoa. Is that good? Is that good? No. no, it's stuck. Yeah, absolutely it's stuck. I like it. Fantastic. How about this over here? <laughs> How about this? You guys like this one? Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> no good. Okay, so again, this is what I'm talking about, right? This, I mean, this is a real, this is everyday stuff. This is, I'm not making up numbers here. Ooh, oh, this is the old parts film. And I kept this here because it's easier to see here. On the newer pressure sensors, only on the exhaust back pressure sensor, okay? If you were to change this, because look, uh, Robert's got this. He sat here. He read fault codes, we did all the things, he's excited. He sees that that's at 4,600 HPA, it needs an exhaust back pressure sensor. Right, Robert? Sure. All right, I like it, he's excited too. So he's gonna go ahead and change it. He also made sure his terminal tension was good, he also made sure his wire, he did all the things and the stuffs, okay? He's ordered one. Look at your temperature, look at your temperature, look at your pressure. Here's why, if, you ordered a new sensor with an uh, 009 153 5028, 
there's a little, there's a little note there. Uh, yeah. And what you had to do, uh, what they do is they say, hey, um, if, the, uh, if, uh, if, you're, if your technician complains about it, then give them this. This is another harness in line. It's got, it's got a resistor on it so that the sensor will work properly. Oh, man. Isn't that nice? What's up? I don't remember, but yeah. So the first time they did this to me, I lost it because I'm looking. I'm like, I'm like, man, I, I I know the sensor was bad. Like I'm not, I'm like, I'm freaking out here. And the sensor did, wasn't stuck at like 4600 anymore. It came down, but I'm like, man, this thing looks out. It's like out by like a like like a thousand out, you know. But I'm like, I know they can be off a little bit, but this is this is getting away from my 275 now, um, and this that that was the problem. Um, I needed the little adapter. adapter. And I'm like, you didn't, you didn't see that in the footnote? This is the parts guy, right? Uh, listen, a good parts guy is very, very valuable to what we do every day, right? Yes. Inherently, the throttle on these are wide open at all times. Okay? The reason why we want to start moving the throttle is we want to be able to aid the flow of EGR. Okay? So what happens here is that um, it's going to depend on my pressure sensors, right? Because what if I'm when I'm hitting that go pedal, I'm not moving the throttle. I'm I'm changing fuel. I'm adding fuel. How much I want, not the throttle, okay? But if I if I need it to be wide open, uh, like if I'm in like regeneration mode, and we'll touch on, we're going to get into it too. I want that throttle wide open. Um, I also want to be able to close the throttle when I need it, right? Like to have a nice easy shut off, and. If my pressure sensors are working right and I need EGR, the way that I want my throttle to work here is that I want to close the throttle slightly so it helps create a slight vacuum in the system to aid the flow of EGR. I don't need glow plugs. I live in a hot climate. I'm not changing them. We're going to learn why this is important. Okay? Your glow plugs are 100% important and it's needed to aid in regeneration. Gasoline engine, what happens if, if, I, if I turn on my EGR at idle? It's running rough. It runs rough, sure, right. It'll run rough. Yeah, it can right, it can stall. It should not do that on this engine. You should hear a tonal change in the engine, and you should be able to watch your numbers change. That's it. You'll hear it different, and you're going to watch the numbers move, but it should not, uh, it, it should not stall it out. Okay? So, and here's why. All right, we're going to use valves again. I do like the valves. So depending on what I want done here, if I go ahead and I, I add uh, EGR, all right, or if I open up my EGR, I want to go ahead and uh, depending on if I'm about 25%, I have more throttle that's open, right? The more I turn the EGR, I'm going to uh, one way and turn him on, I want to turn my throttle back, right? We just talked about this, right? Again, depending if I'm all the way open on EGR, I want less throttle. What happens when I'm closing my throttle? I just talked about it. What happens? Vacuum. What? Vacuum. I'm creating a slight vacuum, right? And I don't need all of that air coming across my mass airflow sensor, right? Because that's how it's measured, right? Yes? OK. If all my pressure sensors are good, right, that we just talked about, right? And I know that I need a certain amount of positioner on for my EGR, so much percentage, I know, I know what I'm looking for. Again, depending on uh, uh, how everybody's working, again, typically 500, and I should cut it in half, roundabouts, okay? Mass down right, right, so your mass airflow sensor, because the number that's going across, the, where's the air that's coming from? The throttle, across the mass air. That's why your mass airflow sensor is going to drop, okay? That's how it's measured. The problem with cleaning them if they're clogged up, which you have to watch out for, is that on those uh, charge air manifolds, they have what they call their ECAS sensors. We'll go on top of them to see where they're at. There's two, right and left, okay? The port shutoff motor is in the center, and it's, it, what it does is the linkage on either side where it's attaching to these little throttle valves that go up the charge air distributors. And the problem is that if you clean these guys, all that junk in there is plastic. You can get it clean, 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 bolt them back down, go take it for a road test, and then you're going to get something that's called an ECAS code, OK? Because what happens is when those guys get loaded up and they get all coked up and you clean it, what did you just do? Now you've got play in the linkage that you didn't have before, 
Okay? So I'm not saying you can't clean them. They're going to be spotless. You could eat breakfast or dinner or whatever you want to eat off of those charge air manifolds, but then you have to worry about the play inside. What this is, is an absolute balancing act. Okay? When we're talking about emissions. What do we want to do when we go down the road? Play flowers. Playing flowers. I like it. There it is. Where were you on that one? Come on. All right. Charge air control theory. All right. We're over here. I've got, uh, we've got our mass air. We've got our turbo sushi slicer. We have... I don't know what that is. What is that? It looks like a, some kind of radiator. I don't know. Look. Oh, these are these guys over here I was just talking about. Yeah. See it? I think it was a radiator, wasn't it, Cole? See this? Anybody? Days of Thunder? No? Okay. Look. Here is our little throttle valve. What's that made out of? Anybody want to take a guess? Plastic. Yay. All right. It's junk. All right. Fantastic. Oh. Whoops. Oh. This guy over here loves the clog. That. Him. Okay. Fantastic. This is what breaks, by the way. Wow, that. Okay, yeah, it's a steering lock. There you go. Can we put an emulator on this one, Mario? What do you think? <laughs> ha, I like it. Okay, so, oh, uh, this, this also nukes as well. And the thing about this turbo, where is it? Oh, is that this, uh, this uh, positioner is flowed to the turbo at where they're putting the turbo together. I don't know why we couldn't have an adaptation to readapt it and relearn the position into the turbo. I think it's absolutely insane, but there is no adaptation, there is no learn. On a Mercedes Benz, there is no learn for it. It doesn't exist, I promise you. Maybe so, wait a minute, you know what? Let's back up. I've got a low boost code. What do I want to check first? Cooler lines. Cooler lines and clamps? What? That's, uh, listen, I told you guys, I got a freaking hot date. I'm not doing all this freaking work. What do I want to check first? Ah, my pressure sensors. Exactly. Let me take a quick look at them, right? Here's my scan tool. Here it is. Boom. What do I got? All right. I know that my pressure sensors are within range, and I'm excited. All right. Dio's excited. We're all pumped up. All right. I'm going to go ahead and check for charge air leaks. Uh, what am I going to use? Power I'm going to power break. Who am I trusting? I mean, who's power breaking? Am I power breaking or am I underneath the hood? What's going on? My brother's. Your brother's underneath the hood. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he legit, he legit threw you under the bus. <laughs> My goodness. Put the wheel on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. About how much pressure do these things make? We looked at a bunch of HPA nonsense while it's in the bay. Um, now, so I have my smoke machine. It's, it's my smoke machine. Oh, oh, well, listen, listen, Robert. I got a smoke machine. It makes smoke. There's a little ball hay doing it goes like that. Is that enough to test for charge air leaks? No. You see that? This is what I'm talking about. That's not supposed to be that far over. It's supposed to be over more. Quantity mean of value adaptation, QMVA. This is what it's talking about. That is our oxygen sensor, okay? Um, what we're trying to do here, again, this is just a balance act, all right? I, I got to be able to run this thing for a very, very long time, and I got to make sure that it's planting flowers out of the tailpipe, okay? When we talk about that, again, we're talking about our EGR and our air, okay? Um, if we have a lean mixture, right, which is, we have what? We have a lean mixture, what do we got? Too much air, okay, not enough fuel. Okay, so what do we gotta do? Okay, or, or how about this? Ah, I like it. We can add EGR now, can't we? Because we add EGR, we're cutting off our fresh air, right? Okay, how about this? We have a rich mixture, we don't have enough air, too much fuel, too much EGR. How many adaptations are there? If it's got a cup holder in this thing, reset the damn adaptation, except for what? The turbo. The turbo, I like it, okay? That's out of a 210 too, I do like that. I feel a little nostalgic, fantastic. EGR, yes? So I'm not that great with diesels, 
for me, fuel trims are what I'm looking for on a gas engine. Uh -huh. So this is the strategy all, every time for sprinters, this EGR fuel correctly. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna use EGR uh, on the 642 on a 651. It's constantly using EGR to address um, what we've got as far as uh, how much air we have. So, never, it's never about the, the amount of pressure in the rail or anything like that. so it, it can adjust for uh, uh, rail as well. But uh, again, it's it's when when we step on the pedal, we're not we're not adjusting air. We're adjusting fuel. So if I'm adjusting fuel because of what I want to do on my go pedal, how else am I going to address it? I got to move my EGR around. Anything that I'm talking about at all here, okay? If you don't have a proper set of test leads, I don't know what you got going on. It's, it's time to rethink your, your, where you're at, okay? Uh, and I mean that wholeheartedly. I've spent a ton of money uh, on, on investing in myself. You guys are here doing it today. And the same thing applies to when you're on the car. If you don't have the right test leads to test out the circuit, it, it, that's where we need to start. I don't want to forget the basics here. I'm not going to just say, just change the mass airflow sensor, right? Because it's not reading right. You still have to go and do your, do, do your due diligence on it. What, are we, what can we do to increase the temperature in the cylinder? What? Ah, glow plug. I'm going to turn my glow plugs on. On, I want this thing as hot as I can get it, okay? So if I'm short tripping the car, my glow plugs ain't working, am I getting up to temperature? There's a good chance I might not be getting all the way there, right? I know they suck and they're, they're, they're a lot of fun to drill out, but it does happen, okay? And after that, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna measure, okay? I'm gonna measure my differential pressure sensor. It's full of soot. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna regenerate it, and then I'm gonna see what I got going on and determine what's there, okay? This is what it's gonna do as, we're, as it's starting that, that, uh, that act of regeneration. Um, when we're using oil, uh, make sure we're using low splash oil. If you use the wrong oil, what's gonna happen? What do we do? What do we say gets a little bit, gets combusted of? Oil, right? What happens if I'm using the wrong oil? How much ash am I gonna make? A lot. Again, this, this, this does happen. This is quite funny. If you're ever uh, seeing these things when you bring them in and it just smells like ammonia, right? And there's the whole back of the vehicle is just wet with stuff. Um, the, the, the SCR cat does store Ad Blue. It's not supposed to store all of it. This is bad. And how does it get like this? How do, what's that? How does it get like that? Well, how? Leaking, not enough heat. Leaking, not enough heat. How else? No Re well, this is not regeneration. Regeneration is at the diesel particulate filter. This is way down. We're done with diesel. We're done with regeneration. How else? This is SCR, right? How else can it, can it end up like that? So I have knock sensors over here, right? I've got two. I've got two knock sensors, right? I've got an upstream and a downstream. Well, what happens if my downstream says, oh, everything's really bad, it's so bad. What do I wanna do? Add more, add blue, inject more, all of it. How much, are you sure? Yes, all of it now. <laughs> and it just fills it up. I have a question. What's up? So, but, so, how, how, not, no. yes. how does the uh, uh, DME know that? D that sounds like BMW talk. We don't talk about that here. <laughs> <laughs> Who here is testing can? Okay, all right, testing can. All right, good. Uh, what am I supposed to add up to? Five volts, so can low plus can high should equal five volts, right? Okay, I like that. So I usually have two and change on either side, right? Okay, um, this is, I see this over here, and I see this, what is, what is that? Why is there stuff there? Is it terminating a resistor? Well, it's, it's, the, it's voltage divider to keep the noise down. What's the noisiest part of a vehicle? Ground. Okay? So what you're going to have here is these guys, like a little, right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep that noise down. That's what this is there for. Okay? What these had a problem of doing was this guy would lift off a little bit and it wouldn't go to ground. So you'd have enough noise that your knock sensor information 
can't get to CDI. Look, there's scope stuff. Look, you see this over here? What's that? It's, it, it is can. Is, what was that, Mario? What, what, so, real quick, can has three ways that it will fail, okay? My three Ps, we have physical, right? Water, rodent, all that nonsense, right? Outside influence. Two, packet loss. Three, processing, okay? Let me ask you a question, Mario. If I'm not using a scope, what does this look like on my meter? What's that, what's that looking like on my meter? It, whatever, but what's, I'm getting voltage, right? What is my can supposed to add up to? Am I catching that with a meter? No. 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 It's just going to show you. There you go. That was the fix, by the way. The problem in this one was the SCR module was out to lunch. It wasn't sending anything on can. I got to address this. We're here. We're talking about diesels. Why do I have to fix diesels? They had an emissions recall. Everything's covered. Sure. <laughs> um, a lot of stuff is covered. Um, what you have to look at is this, OK? You can, you can hop on here. You pop in your VIN. Tell it you're not a robot, unless you're Luigi. And then what you do over here is you can see what was done. Some of them get a software update, and that's it. Some of them have a whole laundry list, OK, of what was done. You can see the date, the mileage, OK? After it was done, it's four years, 48,000 miles from the time that it was repaired, OK? Now, after it was repaired, this is what is covered. DOC, DBF, da 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 Oh, my knock sensors, the fuel injectors, the turbo is covered. Okay? Now, the timing chain, this is all to satisfy EPA. Okay? The reason why I'm telling you this, okay, is because, number one, passenger cars may have to return to the dealer, and that's fine. My trucks, my sprinters, four years, 48,000 miles, that mileage goes real fast. Not unless it's like a camper or something like that and it doesn't get that much use. So we're still fixing this stuff, okay? But if the car comes in, if it's a diesel, the first thing I'm doing, I want to know when was it done, was it done? The other thing that I like to know was it done is because a lot of the vets now are gone, okay? A lot of guys that are worth a damn are gone from the dealer, okay? And there's nothing wrong with being new in this business and I have respect for anybody that's in it. The dealer world has a really good habit of beating the flat rate out of everybody, okay? And especially if, if maybe you're new and, uh, and you're getting into it and you just want the car out because they just want it out, maybe you left some stuff loose by mistake, okay? Because again, it's, the repair really isn't, it's not rewarded anymore. It's how fast can you get it out. So I also like to know when it was done so I can go right to where they were. Guys, I want to cover a couple things on the 651 if you're okay to stay. Okay, fantastic. Okay, everything is plastic, yeah. um, <laughs> including this. Remember our intake before? Yeah. yeah. This is your EGR cooler. Note the plastic. Nice. This is vet. The main thing on this, this turbo doesn't fail, by the way. It does not. It's really robust compared to the other piece of shit we just saw. All right, on the 642, on the 651, it's solid. Okay, I, I've only replaced one in my entire life. And that was because this thing was just beat. Everything was dis, uh, uh, disconnected. There was no air filtration. It was a bad news bears. Um, but what I want to point out here is what is this over here? Somebody read that. What is that? What's number one? What is that? Vacuum unit. Vacuum unit. Mmm. Vacuum. Because you got a lot of that on a diesel, right? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Turbocharging. We know how the turbo works. We're okay. So depending on how many actuators you have, this can change on your application. Okay, they're both in there. Listen, guys, thank you very much for attending. I love the participation. Thank you. Have a great night.